Hi, everybody. Welcome to the She Jumps Gaia GPS Topo Maps 101. Uh, we're really excited to kick, stop, kick start the summer um, season with just a refresher on Topo Maps or just getting to know um, how to read them. So tonight, um, we asked everybody to use the Q&A feature to ask any questions throughout the event. And if you don't have a Gaia GPS account to follow along, you can sign up for a th free three month trial membership go by going to GaiaGPS.com backslash she jumps. Um, okay, so next slide. Um, hi everybody, I'm Angela. I work for She Jumps. I do marketing and partnerships. And we really, She Jumps really strives to um, connect more women and girls outside. And we believe in the transform transformative play of the outdoors. She Jumps creates spaces for empowerment and community to unearth potential of women and girls through outdoor play and connection. Next slide. Uh, we love exploring and She Jumps vision is to unearth the potential of women and girls through outdoor play. And our mission is to increase the participation of women and girls in outdoor activities to foster confidence, leadership and connection to nature and community through free and low cost outdoor education. Next slide. And we all do this with safety first in mind. So we like the following tips and tricks that will help prep you for your trail adventure. Um, we will be sharing, this course helps you with the navigation parts of, tip, of keeping safe in the outdoors and knowing where you're going. And I'm gonna let the Gaia team take it from here. Awesome, thank you. Welcome. Um, I'm Mary from Gaia GPS and Melanie and Kristen are here joining me and um, let's have Melanie introduce herself and then Kristen and I'll tell you a little bit about me. Hey everyone, I'm Melanie. I work on the customer support team at Guy GPS. Uh, I first fell in love with maps when I was living in the mountains of Scotland and on my free time I like hiking and biking and backpacking. Kristen? Hi everyone, my name is Kristen. I am also on the customer support team and I'm located over in the Catskill Mountains in New York. And I would say hiking and backpacking are my biggest, are, are my favorite adventures. And I'd like to use Gaia to plan all of my routes out there. Awesome. Hi, I'm Mary Kokenauer. I am the content manager at Gaia GPS. And that just means I uh, kind of work on the blog and I host and produce a podcast, our Out and Back podcast. And, um, work with copy and all those sorts of things and partnerships as well. Um, what do I like to do outside? Geez, I like to backpack and hike and mountain bike and definitely backcountry ski in the winter. I live in Montana. Um, when I'm not working for Gaia GPS, I also uh, guide backpack trips for an outfit called Andrew Skirk Adventures and I guide um, in Alaska and Colorado and the Sierra. And I'm about to leave to go to the Brooks Range in Alaska, north of the Arctic Circle in just a few weeks here. So we go to places where there are no trails. So we have to read uh, topo maps as, as part of the trip. And that's what we teach our clients. And it's super fun to watch people like get into it. So um, get started here. Tonight, um, we're just gonna go through topographic maps, what they are and why they're so useful. We're gonna cover how to read topo maps to identify land features. And we're gonna talk about tree cover shading on the map and what the colors mean. Um, we're gonna uh, talk about how to practice reading maps in the field. And then finally, we're gonna do like a use case where we create a day hike on Gaia GPS We'll check the stats for the hike on Gaia GPS, and then we're going to study the map and create what I like to call a story for our hike. So topographic maps, some people call them topo maps, other people call them topo maps. I'm not sure which is right. I call them topo maps. So um, 
I guess it just depends what part of the country you're living in. Um, you can call it any one of those things. Uh, what's so important about topo maps? Well, they illustrate the shape of the land surface. They actually make your maps come to life. They make land features pop into almost 3D just by the use of contour lines on the map. If you can read those, it makes a two-dimensional paper map. Just kind of, you can see the canyons fall and the peaks rise. Um, you can see, you know, meadows and cliffs and steep terrain or gentle terrain. So they're really important because they accurately reflect what the terrain looks like on the ground. They, they come originally in paper maps from government sources like uh, the USGS, the Geological Survey. And then of course the US Forest Service has its own uh, topo maps and then more recently, there's been private sources of paper maps, maps like National Geographic Trails Illustrated, which you see here in this picture here, um, Beartooth Publishing. There's a bunch of like private sources of, of maps as well. And of course, there's digital maps, apps like Gaia GPS, which actually takes some of these, go these government sources as well as these private sources and put them all onto your phone. So you can use your phone to navigate, um, navigate offline. So there's paper maps, which I love. I love to lay on the couch and actually look at paper maps and just let them sprawl out and just study them and like dream up routes on there. Um, and I also love my digital maps because I can use them to see exactly where I am in the field because my GPS on my phone tracks where I am. But you know, I like to carry both of those maps in the field and there's two reasons for that. And it's pretty obvious the first one, if you carry a digital map on your phone, obviously your phone is a piece of equipment that can break. Um, you could drop it in a creek and could uh, have a dead battery. You could lose it. I mean, a lot of things could happen to your phone out there. So you could carry a paper map as a backup and really vice versa. You can carry a digital map for your paper map back, a backup to your paper map because you could hold your paper map up and it could blow away in the wind. And I've actually seen that happen. And, but lo and behold, you could also have a digital map to back up your paper map. So they work as good backups. But there's another reason why I advocate for carrying both a digital map and a paper map. It's because on your phone, you can see just as big as your phone screen, right? So your phone screen might be two inches by four inches um, in size. And you can certainly zoom in and zoom out and see bigger areas, but you're really limited to that viewpoint of your digital map. So I like to use that as my main function when I'm in the field to look at my digital maps on my phone in Gaia GPS. But then I also like to carry a very large area um, of land paper map, like the entire wilderness area that I'm planning to visit so that I can kind of see in a, in a broad brush where I sit in that landscape. Um, Cause then I can see exactly where my phone is showing me in relation to a larger portion of land. Um, it's just really helpful for understanding where you fit in. So all these maps um, that we just talked about, the private sources, the government sources, they have different styles. So different styles of topo maps. I'm gonna show you a few. Here's Gaia Topo. This is Gaia GPS's proprietary map that we make in-house at Gaia GPS. You look at this and it looks rather blank and that's on purpose actually because this map is um, actually made to show more features on the map as you, as you zoom in on the map itself. So if I were to scroll in on this map and zoom in on say that lake that's in the center of it, you would see the lake's name, you would see you know, all kinds of things on the map um, in addition to this, what's here now. So um, this map is special because 
of this particular feature. It makes it really easy to download to your phone. It doesn't take up a lot of uh, space or take a lot of time to download huge portions of the map. And downloading, of course, is very important because if you're going outside of a place with cell service, you need to download your map so you can view the map on your phone when there's no cell service. Now, this is the same area, and this is the National Geographic Trails Illustrated map for Desolation Wilderness um, near Lake Tahoe Basin. You can see this has a lot of detail on it. <laughs> it's pretty signature of Nat Geo maps. They have, you know, campsites on here around Eagle Lake. You can see the mileage markers between segments of the trail. You can see kind of amenities at the at the trailhead, like if there's picnic area, trash, parking. Um, there's just a lot that you can see on here. You, you have trail names on there as well, peak names and then land ownership names on there. Um, this is the US Geological Survey topo map, which, you know, this is the original like classic map for the United States. It's, it maps out in topo topographic map across the United States. There's, um, they kind of have been in existence for like a century. You could see there's not a ton of detail on these maps. They just kind of highlight the main features and they don't get updated very often, but they're kind of a trusted source because they've been around for so long. And like old dogs like me, we like to go down to the uh, outdoor store and pull out all the different quad maps. This is exactly what they are. All of these maps I just showed you today are in Gaia GPS, including the National Geographic Trails Illustrated. You can get those on your phone through Gaia GPS as well as this USGS topo map and uh, Gaia topo as well as tons of other maps as well. You just have to kind of peruse through them and see what you like. So you can see though, they're all different. They just have little different um, emphasis and different um, styling and you have to see what's right for you. But one thing all these maps have in common are those little squiggly lines <laughs> all over the map. And those are contour lines. And what do contour lines represent? Well, they are a constant point of elevation on the land surface. So they just represent elevation on the map is all they are. And they really are, contour lines are what make a topo map a topo map. Without the contour lines, they're not a topo map. So you could see here on the left side of your screen, this is the um, National Park Service visitors map for Yosemite uh, National Park. And this is Tuolumne Meadows. This is a straight up uh, regular map. It's not a topo map. You could see a lot of different features on here. You can see lakes and rivers and, and peaks and the road and different trails. Um, it gives you a lot of information, but what it doesn't give you is a peek at what the landscape looks like. In order to do that, it would have to look like the map on the right with all these contour lines. And if you know how to read those contour lines, you can see which way is uphill on this map, which way is downhill. You can see the peaks and how steep they are. You can see valleys. Um, you can see meadows. It's just, you can really read these features to get a sense of what the terrain looks like on the ground. So how do you read contour lines? I think that's why we're here today. Um, there's really three things you need to know about contour lines. Number one, we've already discussed what they are. So they're just a line drawn on the map that rep represents a constant point of elevation. And, and you might ask, well, what elevation? What, what elevation are all these lines representing? Well, the easiest way to look at where, kind of get an idea of where you're looking at for um, contours is to look for these bolded lines on the map that have an actual elevation reference point printed on them. So these darker contour lines are called index contours. 
there, every fifth line on this map is an index contour and it has um, this elevation marker printed right on there. So right here, looking at this topo map, we know that we're looking at around 12,800 feet in elevation. This is actually a peak down towards Mount Whitney in the Sierra. So it's pretty high elevation. And then the next thing you need to know is, well, what is the next contour line? What elevation is that? So if this one here with the bolded line is 12,800 feet, well, what is this one that's down below it? Contour inter intervals tell you that these lines represent a 40 foot um, difference in elevation with each line. So if you were to go up to this next contour line by Mount Young from 12,800 feet, this next contour line represents 12,840 feet. And so subtract 40 to this one and be 12,760 feet on the, on the one below it. So, um, and you can kind of go and count down below and see how much the slope drops here. So how do you know what the contour inter interval is on each map? Well, each map of course is different <laughs> just to mix it up. So, but generally speaking, most, con most uh, topo maps, their contour lines are every 40 feet. That's a general rule. Now you get other maps. I think a lot of nap geo maps are 50 feet in between contour lines. And then of course in Alaska where the, where the landscape is so big and so grandeur, uh, the maps up there are a hundred foot contour lines. So, um, but the USGS maps and the Gaia Topo map, they're mostly all 40 feet difference. So, um, Contour lines present in patterns um, to represent different features. And when you get used to reading them, you can kind of just, you can kind of identify land features just by the way um, contour lines are representing on the map. So a general rule of thumb is when contour lines are spread kind of far apart, you're looking at not steep terrain. So when you think about it, it makes sense, right? So if you're standing here at this lake in the middle of this, um, this map here, and you're walking towards Mount Young, and you're going to cross one contour line and another contour line before you get to this lake, that's two contour lines. That would be 80 feet that you're, each, each one represents 40 feet. So that would be 80 feet you're gaining, but it's taking you all this distance to, to gain that 80 feet. Whereas contour lines that are close together represent steep terrain. So as you get closer towards Mount Young, you can see these contour lines are getting closer and closer together. That means as you're approaching up this hillside, it's not taking you a long time to gain 40 feet. That's because it's getting steeper and steeper and steeper. And actually, eventually, when those lines come all the way together, you know that you're looking at a cliff. So you can see this is probably pretty cliffy here, right to the north of Mount Young. And then in this area on the right-hand side of your screen here too, you can kind of see there's some really close contour lines and those also represent cliffs probably. And then you can kind of see like when you get up on top of those cliffs, so it, it doesn't, it kind of levels out a little bit. It gets uh, the contour lines spread out. And uh, so up on top of the mountain, it, it looks like it gets a lot more mellower, but it's gonna be pretty steep getting up there. Um, so, Contour lines can also represent in patterns for um, different land features. So you can identify terrain just by the way the shape of the contour lines look. So today we're going to be pointing out or learning about how to, to find peaks on contour on topo maps 
And we're going to be talking about ridges, which fall off the shoulders of peaks. And then we're going to be talking about drainages or gullies or couloirs, which cut into the side of the mountain towards the peak. And then saddles, which are low points between two peaks. So let's just jump right in this. So one of the easiest land features to identify on a topo map is a peak. They are, they represent as the smallest circle, closed circle on the map. So if you just take a look at this map here, which is a USGS um, topo map, you can kind of look through this whole map and point out closed circles and those are peaks. So right in the center here, we have a peak um, the map has its elevation written on there, 9,704 feet with the little X marking the highest point of that circle. Um, that is a peak. Um, you can go to the north here and here's a little bit higher peak at 10,451 feet. Um, it's got an X marking its highest point and you can see its smallest circle there but also look to the east of that 10,000 foot peak. And here's another closed circle. So there, there's another peak there. And if you look around the whole map, you can actually point out peaks throughout this entire map. Um, just because they don't have a name or an X or an elevation mark doesn't mean that they're not a peak. So um, you can actually see there's, several peaks. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, nine, 10, 11, at least 11 peaks on this one map. So, um, okay, ridges. Ridges are a very identifiable feature on a topo map. They present as V-shaped um, lines or U-shaped lines that point downhill away from the peak. So the easiest way to start looking for these ridge lines is to actually, number one, first find the peak. So we know peaks are closed circles. So here we are, we can see this peak right here, 12,068 feet. This is a closed circle. And we know that ridges pour off the shoulders of a peak. So we're looking at for V-shaped lines that are pointing downhill off the peak. So if you look from this peak, you can see here to the Northwest, these are kind of U-shaped marks or pretty close to Vs that are pouring off the peak's summit. Okay, there's one ridge. You can look down here. This is also a ridge that's coming off the summit, although it's much more U-shaped than this ridge on to the north. All that means is when you have a U-shaped uh, ridge like this, it's going to be a much broader or wider ridge um, than this one here, where it's dramatically uh, much more like a V-shaped this is gonna be more prominent ridge, more like a knife edge ridge. Um, so yeah. Now opposite to that are gullies, which cut into the mountain, right? So they're like, like drainages that water can flow down. So this is gonna be opposite to peaks. They still represent in a U-shape or a V-shape pattern on the topo map, but they, are going to be pointing up the hill towards the peak. So when you're thinking about this, think about this elevation line when you're looking down at a canyon and it always comes back into the peak. So they're always pointing into, if, you, if you're gonna walk around it, it's always pointing in towards the peak. It's not pointing out like a ridge. So that's kind of how I remember it. It's, some people just have to remember it just from, from scratch here, but I kind of like to visualize it to remember which way peaks point away from the peak or ridges point away from the peak and gullies point in towards the peak. So first step, always identify the peak first. So here we are, this is the same map. Um, we've already identified this ridge, which is the V's pointing away from the peak. 
right here and right here. Now we're looking for gullies that are U-shaped lines pointing uphill towards the peak. So you can see right next to the, in between these two ridges, you have this U-shape that's actually pointing at the peak. This is a gully. Um, it's a pretty wide gully. Um, so it's pretty broad and flat in there. Um, although it looks pretty steep, right? Look at these contour lines are pretty close together. Um, let's find another gully off of here. Well, this one right next to it on the other side of this ridge, you can see there's actually a blue line in here. This indicates year round water. Although <laughs> I gotta tell you that sometimes I've seen this on the map and late in the summer, I've gone to places that say year round water and there's no year round water in there. So be skeptical of that, even if it is on the Tobo map, especially out West. Um, so you can see here, this is also pointing up towards the peak. And this looks more dramatic here. So this might be more of a little canyon that's kind of um, coming around this water source up here than this kind of flatter, wider open ridge. So saddles. Saddles are the low spot between two peaks. And they're kind of important to notice on the map because oftentimes trails go over saddles. They don't often go straight up a peak or anything. They'll look for um, a saddle in between two big peaks because it's the easiest, um, least resistance, right? So saddles are good things to point out on the map, especially if you're traveling off trail, you're gonna wanna go over a saddle instead of the actual peak itself. So we're looking for the low point between two peaks. So looking at this map, we're gonna start where we always do, which is find the peak itself. And so we here, we see a closed circle right here. And if we go over here, we see another closed circle and we can see another closed circle right here. Well, in between those peaks, there's a low point <laughs> in between them. And you can tell that because these contour lines are kind of shaped like an hourglass in between them, see that? So um, the contour lines kind of point to each other and then there's a blank spot in the middle where it's actually flat where the saddle is. So they point towards each other in kind of an hourglass fashion. So how are you gonna put all this together? <laughs> so you can look at one map and you can actually just start picking out features, right? You can like, here's a map with all kinds of features on it. We have, let's start by looking at the peak itself, which is what we try to do in, in every topo map. We find the peak, the high point. We have a peak here, which is Mount Chamberlain. We've got Mount Newcomb over this way, Mount Pickering, Joe Devil Peak over here. And then if you start looking around the map, you can just pick out some features. Look, here's a saddle right off of kind of northwest of Mount, Mount Chamberlain. We can tell this because we have two different distinct contour lines pointing towards each other in an hourglass shape. So that's gonna be a gully right here because it's pointing up towards the peak or uphill. And this is also a gully over here pointing up uphill. Um, we could find ourselves some ridges on here. Like here's one in this box right here. These, here's Joe Devil Peak. You can look right here. It's got V's pointing downhill off the peak. It's rolling off the shoulders of the peak. You can see a drainage right here in this box. So just like over, over by that saddle, we have um, a V shape pointing uphill towards Mount Newcomb. And then we have year round water in here with a drainage pointing uphill to this crab tree pass. So um, you can also take a look around the map and just point out like, here's a flat area. This must be like a meadow in this section because look at these contour lines are so far apart. It would take forever to gain or lose elevation on here. You'd have to walk all this distance. But then over on this other side, we have some steep contour lines, which kind of show us but this is pretty steep. Maybe it's even too steep to travel through. You'd have to go out there and see for yourself probably. You can look at this area on the north of Mount Chamberlain. These are really close together contour lines, probably indic indicating a cliff. 
Okay, so what else can we gather from the map just by looking at it? Um, the USGS maps, which is this map right here, and also Gaia Topo now has this tree cover shading on it. So the actual base map in this map anyway is kind of this, this um, whitish color. And then you could see there's green on here and this is called tree cover shading. The green equals trees or actually it could be shrubs or anything that's kind of like head high vegetation is gonna be this green color. So what does this no color mean? <laughs> um, it actually just means like no trees. So you can't actually know like um, what, you know, like if there's gonna be no vegetation on there, it, it can, you know, it just means that there's no trees. It could be low shrubs, it could be grass out there, it could be scree, it could be talus. You don't know, you just know that there's no trees there. But if you look at this map, you can kind of start gathering an inference of what it actually means to have, whoops, to have um, no trees on there. So like this is McClure Meadow right here. It's flat, it's right next to a creek, but yet it's showing no trees. Um, because it's right in this area and it's surrounded by trees and it's this area, I would probably guess that this is a grassy meadow right here. But then if I go up above this tree cover shading and I see, look at, we're getting way up into these steep terrain here. Um, it looks like this is 11,000 feet and that's where all of the trees stop at 11,000 feet. So we're going above tree line. And I'm trying to imagine like, this is probably a mountain up here that's way above tree line. It probably is talus. It's probably not gonna, it's the Sierra. It's not gonna be grassy uh, hillsides up on top. So you can kind of make inferences from tree cover shading. So how do you, how do, you do this in the field? That's what we're here for, right? We, we can study the map all day long at home um, but how is it that you're going to like finally get to read these maps and figure out what it is in the field? Well, the, the way to do this is to actually pick an area that you can visit, that you know you're going to visit, and you can go there and study the map as you go along on your trip on a hike or something. And then as you're there, you can identify land features on the map and then take the map with you into the field and then point them out so that you can correlate what you see on the map to what you see with your own eyes. And you can check your work. This is how you learn to read topo maps. It's really a lot of practice, but sooner or later, it'll, it'll all correlate in your brain. Like, whoa, when the contour lines are this close together, I know that's probably like a 30 or 40 degree slope. It's just, you start reading the topo lines and, or the contour lines and you start correlating it to different landscape features and steepness and all those sorts of things. So when you're checking your work in the field, did those peaks look to you as you imagined them when you studied them on the map? You can look as you're walking, how steep is the slope in relation to the contour lines that are on the map? Did you see cliffs and ridges and gullies and those kinds of things? Can you identify saddles and point them out as you're there in the map? So, and check your inferences on the type of terrain based on the tree cover shading. You'll see it on the map, go out there. Is, are these trees like over your head? Are they providing shade? Is it the type of um, uh, terrain surface that you expected? Is it a meadow or is it scree where there's no terrain? Um, so we're gonna actually kind of do this. <laughs> Let's um, plan a day hike. Uh, in the Lake Tahoe area from Eagle Falls Trailhead to Bayview. This is in the Desolation Wilderness uh, on the west shore of Tahoe. The goal here is to plan a trip on Gaia GPS before we go. We're going to view the stats for our trip on Gaia GPS, so we'll learn about what to expect on this hike. We're going to remember to download the map <laughs> um, so that we'll have it with us. Um, and then what you do from there is you take that out to the field and you create a story for your hike. You pick out the features you expect to see 
And then you take the hike and you see, you check your work. Am I correct? So let's start planning our hike here. I'm going to switch over to the map and I'm going to, I'm just scrolling out right here to give you an idea of where we're at on the map. So this is Lake Tahoe in California. This is a state line with Nevada. Um, I'm gonna scroll in. You can see this whole area on the left-hand side of the screen. This is Desolation Wilderness. And let's just say I'm here for the weekend and I want to plan a day hike and I'm going to actually create a route on Gaia GPS. And how I do that, there's all these little um, buttons over here on the side. I'm going to pick this one here, which is create a route. And I'm gonna click on that. And you can see it's gonna, it's gonna track whatever I'm doing here. So I'm gonna pick my starting point to be right here on the map. And I know I wanna go all the way to this junction and, and you can see this is in hiking mode here. And what that does is it snaps this, tr this route that I created right to the trail. So it'll actually create a route on the trail itself. And I know that I want to end down here at the Bayview campground. Put it right there. And that's my route right there. So I'm going to start at Eagle Falls. I've left a car over here and my friend and I were going to walk up this this um, route here and make make this trail junction and head back down. Now I want to save this route and I'm just going to call it Eagle Falls. Falls. Oh, let's see my computer is kind of There we go. Okay, and you can you can it'll tell you all the stats for this route right here. We know it's five miles in length. We're gonna go up 2,100 feet on this route. Um, you can see it's all uphill from the beginning. It, it tells you right here that we're going for three miles. We're gonna be climbing. And then we're gonna go downhill pretty rapidly. So that gives us a really good picture of what to expect in the field. Um, and the descent is 1800 feet and the climb is 2100 feet. That's our max elevation is 80, almost 8,500 feet here. We could put some notes in there if we wanted and we're gonna save this, okay? So that looks pretty good. You know, I, I kinda wanna drop a couple of waypoints cause there are a few spots I don't wanna miss. So I'm just gonna go over here and here's a little button here where you can drop waypoints. You can see a waypoint on the map here. I'm gonna put it right where I start. And I think I'll put this as the car. I always like to mark the car just in case, just in case uh, I can't find the trailhead and I wanna know where, the, where I parked my car. So um, save that. See, actually, I want to change it to a car icon. So there, how's that? We'll make it obvious that it's the car and we'll save that. And certainly, I don't want to miss this junction up here. <laughs> I want to make sure I make this left-hand turn. So I think I'll drop another waypoint right there. And I'm going to save that. Whoops. I'm going to drag this over here. Now I'm going to save that. It'll tell me where I'm at. And then I'm going to end this hike at Bayview. So um, let's drop another waypoint right there. We'll just call it Bayview. And we dropped another car there. So I'm just going to put a car icon in there too. Cool. Here we go. All right. So there's our route, right? So I'm just scrolling, pulling this down a little bit. I want to zoom in here and try to find some land features because I want to know like, what am I up against today? So here I am, I'm looking at our route. We know we're going to start here, just looking at a broad stick scale of the map here. I see a peak right in the center of it. So really this, this hike is going around a peak, it looks like. You can also kind of see there's a saddle right there too. So I'm kind of going to hit the saddle and go down 
So I'm expecting to see a saddle. We know that for the first three miles, it's gonna be all uphill. Um, what else can we see here? When I zoom in, you can look at this tree cover shading. It looks like it's mostly in the trees. So, you know, it looks pretty good for shade if it's a hot day. Um, water sources, wow, it looks pretty dry from this lake to this lake. This is Eagle Lake to Granite Lake. Looks like I'm gonna have no water. So I'm gonna wanna carry water with me during the day. Um, this, this hike starts on the, the trail is on the northern side of this creek and then it looks like it crosses it. And so when I make this story for the day, this is really, really important. When I'm looking at the map, I wanna visualize in my head, what is my story for the day? Well, I'm gonna start at this trailhead and before not too long, I'm gonna cross the creek and the creek will then be on the right hand side of the trail or, or the right hand side of my hike. So this is really important when you create a story that you actually know it because if you're leaving the parking lot and you walk for an hour and the creek is still on your left, you know you're not on the right trail. <laughs> so the, you, know, you wanna pay attention to the features as you go. So the creek is now on your right side, you're gonna pass a lake. It looks like after the lake, you're gonna cross a ton of contour lines right off the bat. So it probably is gonna get pretty steep in there for a while. And look at here, we're gonna go into a gully right here. See these contour lines are pointing uphill. So that looks like you go in a little bit of a gully. You kind of keep climbing, climbing, climbing up to the junction. And then you know that you're gonna turn here, make a left and you're gonna climb, a, looks like you climb a little bit more, but, it, but it's not as steep, right? Look at how far apart those contour lines are. And you're gonna keep going, like I said, sort of in between this, this um, saddle, and then you're gonna drop down to the car. You can kind of, what's, I'll show you a kind of a trick here. On Gaia GPS, you can actually see this button on the right hand side of your screen. You can click this into 3D mode. Okay, so now it's viewing in 3D and I toggle this pitch control up here. And this is a great tool for learning how to read contour lines. So, and I'm gonna press my control button and use my mouse to rotate the screen here. And you can kind of see there we are at Eagle Falls and we're going to walk along the river and cross it. And then we're gonna follow the river. And just like we said before, I'm zooming in here, um, we, 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 out, we cross this uh, lake here and we start climbing pretty hard right off the bat. And just like the map told us, we're gonna be in a gully. We're gonna hit the junction and make a left at the junction. Let's see what the other side of this mountain looks like, if we can see this saddle. Um, let me see here. I'm gonna bring it in a little closer. Oops, there we go. And then it kind of goes in between these two peaks right here and then drops down into Granite Lake Basin. There you go. You can kind of see the saddle on the right-hand side of the screen and it drops into Granite Lake Basin and down to the trailhead. Okay, so we kind of know what to expect there. Um, if you really, really, really want to see this, um, you can change your map source. Let's get out of three, 3D here and go back to 2D. And what you would do next, honestly, is to go out in the field and, and look at these contour lines and see if they match up with what you imagined it to be like in the field. Take your checklist, you know, did I walk underneath the cliffs here that, that are right under this peak? Um, are those cliffs? Uh, did we go in a gully? Did we pass through a saddle? Um, point out those features and check your work in the field, that's the only way you can correlate that. Of course, we can't do that today. So the next best thing we can do is actually change our map source 
to satellite. And we'll turn this down here. So now we're looking in Gaia GPS on satellite. And this, this really doesn't tell us a whole lot, I don't think. But because you can kind of see, well, one thing you can see, like look at all this tree cover shading. This kind of matches what it said on the map. It's mostly in the shade and in trees. But you know what? You still can't see in the satellite map what's steep and what's not until you click this into 3D. And you can get a really good sense of the terrain in here. And I'm just actually pressing my control button on my mouse or on my keyboard, and I'm using my mouse to rotate the screen around. This gives you a really good sense of what the terrain looks like out there. You can see we parked the car down here at this waypoint. We climbed up along here. It looks like um, we're gaining elevation just like we thought we would. Up above Eagle, Fall, Eagle Lake here, it climbs pretty rapidly like we expected because it was crossing a bunch of contour lines. And then we hit this gully, just like it showed on the, on the map with the uh, contour lines pointing uphill there. We reached this gully, kept climbing uphill to the saddle and it kind of flattened out just like it showed on the, on the topo map. And I'm gonna rotate it a little bit here. You can see there's the saddle between the two peaks, just like we expected. We hit the saddle and we came all the way down to Granite Lake and all the way down to our car. So yeah, and that's how we would check it. And then we would go out in the field and double check that. So, and from here on out, I think I've taken up all my time about 50 minutes. Um, I think we're going to open it up to questions right now. Hey, Mary, we actually do have a couple of questions already that I think uh, might be helpful if you showed the 3D map again. Someone was asking, uh, I always get confused about what is north facing or south facing and what that means. Does it north facing mean north aspect or is it facing the north directions? And regarding the route that you just built specifically, um, is that facing north or is that facing south? So one thing about topo maps is it's best to start with a printed map to understand that the top of every topo map, if you're looking at a topo map like this, the top of the topo map is always north. So that's a good way to orient yourself in the landscape. On this here, you can, I, I would prefer to look at it in um, not, not the satellite, but on a topo map here. I have my settings set and I'm gonna come out of 3D and go into 2D. I have my settings set so that north is just like on the topo map, it's always north. So up here on the top of this map, is north and down here at the bottom of the map is south. And this is east and this is west. So north facing are slopes that are facing to the north. So let's just look at this peak right here that we walked around. These slopes here are facing north and that's where the good skiing is. <laughs> <laughs> so, and these slopes here, because they're shaded, right? And then these slopes here face south um, or southeast. Um, and that's how I, I determine them. So did that, that answer the question? Yes, I believe it's it. Okay. Any more questions? There's a few more coming in on the Q&A here. Uh, here's a question you could answer, Mary. To plan off-route travel, 
would you say that the gully ridge or the saddle is the best place to aim for, which is usually more foot travel friendly when there is no snow on the ground? I think that really depends on what you're looking at, right? So um, I typically look for, and it depends where I am too, and it can all be different. Like when I go to Alaska, I love ridge lines because there's no bushes in there. <laughs> And if you drop down into the valleys, you wind up with a lot of vegetation in those valleys and you bushwhacking and all kinds of things like that, where I'd rather be walking on a high ridge line. But high ridge lines can also be very rocky and they can be knife edge. So I would be looking for something more of a U-shaped ridge that's more broad. Um, that way I know that it's kind of a broad ridge and not very dramatic knife edgy type ridge. Um, I think you have to watch out in gullies with bushes. That's one thing that, um, just depending on where you are, of course, that's not going to be an issue. If you're talking about the Southwest, you're looking more at like canyons and those kinds of things. And you're walking in a dry wash or a gravel, bed, you know, a gravel, um, bed on a stream bed. So it's really dependent on the area. Mary, could you also talk about looking for snow on the trail and how you might use Gaia GPS to do that? Sure. Um, so in Gaia GPS, we have several different layers. I can kind of pull them out here for you. I don't have them loaded up here, but I can search them out for you. Um, we have a satellite. Let me look for this thing here satellite imagery. Uh, we have this thing called fresh sat cloud free and fresh sat re recent. And I'll just add this one here to you, to this map. Um, let's see. There we go. There it is. I'm just going to move this up here. Oops. There we go. I'm going to put this on top of Gaia Topo. See, when I add this layer up here, I'm putting it on top of Gaia Topo. And I can use these toggle switches to make this more prominent and dial this one back. And let me tell you about this fresh sat layer right here. Okay, I'm making it so. So we're looking at our route right now. Um, this has actual clouds on it though. So I'm going to add this cloud free one as well, which takes the clouds out of the picture for us. Um, and I'm going to toggle that one up as well here. It's not a high resolution satellite. It's meant to, it's meant to um, take out or just give you a kind of a broad picture look at um, what the snow conditions look like on the ground. So if you zoom into this map here, you're not going to see good details like you did on our satellite layer, this map box satellite layer, but you are going to get a view of where the snow is on this um, recently. And you can see each little square of the map is taken, like this picture here was taken on May 17th. And so you can see how often this is updated. This is called a near in time satellite imagery. And so it gives you a good sense. If some of the clouds are still in the way here, but it gives you a picture of where the snow lies and where it has melted out. So if you back away from Tahoe, you can kind of see these elevations up here are going to be still covered in snow, um, also to the north as well. And actually, that's melting out pretty good. <laughs> so that's one layer I like to use to see, like if I'm going to encounter snow. We also have a snow depth layer, which is estimate snow based on um, um, kind of like a satellite imagery type of thing. We have an entire blog post on this. And I'm, I'm wondering, we just wrote this. I'm wondering if it can be posted in the chat or we can follow up with it in the, um, with an email. So, but we do have a, a blog post that we just recently published about how to find 
if there's going to be snow on the trail. And that's that's one way you can look at the at the snow depth layer and then verify it with this fresh sat and you can get a good idea of it. You know, honestly though, I like to find people who have been out there and try to get a little bit of data from people out in the field. So I join Facebook groups like if you're going to hike the John Muir Trail, join their Facebook group. Somebody will post on there um, if they've been out there and have encountered snow or call a ranger station just to verify what you might see on these maps. So, anybody else? Mary, do you want to um, just address real quick? Uh, someone's asking about um, finding backcountry camping spots. How do you normally look for those? Backcountry camping spots. Well, I think number one, I would, I definitely like to look at Gaia Topo. Um, you could zoom in on our route. Let's say you wanted to camp at Eagle Lake. Um, I would, what are we always looking for in camping? We're looking for kind of a flat area, right? We don't want to be sleeping on an incline where there's a hill. So let's say we want to camp here at Eagle Lake. To me, it looks like there's some flatter areas up to the north part of the lake here. Remember the top of the map is gonna be north. Um, so right to the north of this lake, it's, it's away from the water. Um, if you wanna be 200 feet away, cause that's leave no trace rules. So this, this will be good up in here probably. So I'd probably get to this lake and probably head here first to go look for it. Um, if it's cold outside, I'm, you know, I kind of grew up hanging around the Sierras and I know like when I get in high elevation and it's, it could be summertime, but if I get above 11,000 feet or something, if you don't have tree cover, uh, it, all the heat from the ground just evaporates into the air. So if you're looking for warmer places to camp, you want to have a little bit of tree cover over you, um, it's much warmer that way. So, and you can see on this map, we have shaded area on here, which is indicating some trees, which would be good to keep us a little bit warm um, at night. You know, you could, you've looked at it this way, you actually could now change your map source to satellite and get a good idea of what that looks like on the north, north side of the lake here. Um, and if you put it in 3D, you'll be able to see like, is this going to be relatively flat over on that side of the lake itself? I'll toggle this up. Oops. And my computer is slow because I'm running both the Zoom and, and this map right here. So here's Eagle Lake. I was thinking to the north side of the lake right here. What does that actually look like? And pans out pretty good. Looks like you could kind of cross this creek and get up on top of this knoll and see some flat areas up in here. So that's how I pick out spots to camp. <laughs> Do we have any other questions? That's all our questions for now. We did answer a bunch of them uh, typing into the Q&A as well. So people can see those on the answered tab. And I believe uh, we'll, we'll share all the resources that we um, shared in those answers after this um, recording as well. Excellent, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us with She Jumps and Gaia GPS. So, bye everyone.